I'm joined by Joseph Kichishian from Beirut. He's a Middle East analyst and the author of several books, including Power and Succession in Arab Monarchies. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us, Joseph, once again. Um, let's start with uh, what's happened in the last hour. We've heard from the opposition Syrian National Council, which has called for an urgent meeting of the UN Security Council. Do you think that with these reports of a new massacre emerging, this will prompt the Security Council to take uh, tougher action on, on Syria? Probably not. Unfortunately, these kinds of declarations have been made before, and the uh, Syrian National Council has repeatedly requested the international community to actually take its, put its act together and do something that is, uh, that is make sure that the, the killings at least uh, stop, even if the political solution might take a while. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, no one seems to pay attention to what the Syrian National Council is requesting and the killings are continuing. And we've heard the SNC blame Russia for the ongoing violence. But, and this is not just the SNC, we've even heard the United States uh, calling on Russia to, to do more, to change its stance. But can all the blame really be laid on Russia, be laid on Russia? I mean, even if the Russians were to come on board and support a tougher resolution on Syria, would that change the situation on the ground? Would it help save Syrian lives, you think? It's not a question of putting blame on Russia, but clearly Moscow does detain the veto power at the Security Council. A number of times, the international community has tried to push through the Security Council appropriate resolutions, presumably up under Chapter 7, which would authorize the use of force, even though no one has really volunteered to intervene militarily in Syria to put an end to the stop. And and of course, Moscow has repeatedly exercised the no vote and, and vetoed a couple of resolutions. Therefore, it's not a question of blaming Russia, mm. but the question that must be asked really is, is Syrian life, are Syrian lives so cheap for the Russians that nothing needs to be done about it? Well, Kofi Annan, that's, is, I think it's a fair Kofi Annan as you know, is heading to Moscow in the next few days to try and convince Russia to change its stance. I mean, how can they be convinced? What more can be said to the Russians to uh, drop their support to Bashar al-Assad? That's the $25,000 question that Kofi Annan and others have been trying to crack, and nobody seems to have the answer to it. Simply stated, the struggle that's going on between Russia on the one hand and, and, and the United States and its allies on the other, on the other hand, cannot seem to find some kind of a, of a way out. I think at this point, it is incumbent on the major powers to actually compromise and try to figure out what can be done really to put an end to the fighting. That's, that's really the best that can be hoped for for the time being. That is a ceasefire more than anything else because a political solution is going to take a long time to sort out. But a ceasefire can be accomplished nowhere nowhere in sight, unfortunately. And, and uh, the, the, the opposition has said that it's clearly not interested in a political solution right now. And uh, we've heard them again today uh, with uh, the SNC leader speaking in Turkey, calling uh, for more street protests inside Syria. Can you know street pressure work in the end, do you think? If we're to see more demonstrations inside the country, would that put pressure on the Assad government? Or do you think that the violence is just simply likely to continue? It will not, unfortunately. The weakness of the Syrian National Council has been, today as in the past, the fact that it is not united. The Syrian National Council, the opposition if you would like, has had a series of blunders, disagreements amongst the head of the Syrian National Council, uh, and a variety of individuals trying to jockey for power. And the opposition that is within the country is also divided, some siding with the regime and others against it. I think that the opposition's Achilles heel is really to, to address this tremendous opportunity that exists be in front of them. How are they going to deal with the Damascus regime? They haven't figured that one out yet. Okay, thank you very much for your perspective. Joseph Chetishian joining us there live My from pleasure. Beirut.